Nobody knows where the original builders of ancient Peru went or even when, but we can guess as to why. It must have been a mega quake that did this at Machu Picchu and also rattled Sacsayhuaman and the entire Cusco Valley. But if you could build walls like this, would you give up if they moved like they're supposed to? No. Something much bigger and irreplaceable was lost to that horrific quake. This video is about the Great Lost Lake of the Andes. It's no secret that the Andes Mountains are moving. They are on the pressure side of the Pacific Rim Plate and they are rising every year. And the quakes are not uncommon. There are tremors and aftershocks. This movement is also known to affect the lakes that are in the Andes. Lake Titicaca is not what it was 200 years ago. Never mind what it might have been 2,000 years ago when its edge came right up to Pumapuku. Yes, this part of the world is shifting. It's changing more than most. And with this movement, we need to consider that several thousand years ago, there was an enormous laguna, a huge lake, right up in the middle of the Andes at an altitude of almost 10,500 feet. It was 25 miles long and 500 feet deep, and an advanced civilization lived on its shores and fished from its waters. There was a spillway at its outlet, and the farms were able to soak it in with more than 100 miles of coastline. Gorgeous, dry weather, it was a utopia. There are still other lagunas today at similar altitudes in the Andes, but they are smaller, ranging from 5 miles to 12 miles long. The lake that this video is about was much larger and deeper. Then the Andes moved, an entire hillside went solvent, shifted, collapsed, and the lake burst forth into the valley to the north. This torrent raged downstream and destroyed everything in its path. All was lost. This happened thousands of years ago, and it changed everything. Today, any inquisitive, clear-minded person would correctly state that if there had been a spillway, it would still be there. Well, it is. It's a megalithic site called Rumikoika. And that same inquisitive person would also correctly state that if there were structures along the coastline of this enormous lake, they would still be there. Well, they are. Today they're called the Kori Kancha, Hatun Rumiak, and Tupan, all at the same altitude along the shoreline at greater than 10,000 feet. And Saxawayman is the big house on the hill looking out over all of it. But suddenly, after a shattering quake, the view was a muddy mess. The water was gone. Walls were cracked, villages were flattened, water sources disrupted, and the lake was gone. They packed up everything and left. And yes, at this point, I would have too. All of the indicators and clues are there. Everything lines up along the northern shore. Take a look for yourself. It's likely that more than a thousand years passed. Here's an image of what Manco Capac found 800 years ago as he first entered into this lush valley. And as he made his way to the other end of the valley, he found huge structures of incredible stone craftsmanship and gigantic size. Manco Capac had no idea that he'd been walking along the bottom of a long lost lake. Why would he? Why would anybody? It was a gorgeous, empty valley, blessed with amazingly fertile soil. At the farthest end, he decided to use these stone structures, this incredibly spiritual place, to base his people. Additionally, the gods were very happy as this entire valley was incredibly fertile. Such a gift, an entire valley that had previously been the bottom of a huge lake, now fertile with thick layers of fish poop and the many millennia of soil runoff from the mountains. So it was that 800 years ago, the Inca planted and prospered in an arid climate that had amazing soil, easily supporting tens of thousands, and yet at such a high altitude and using so very little water. So the next time you are in the southeastern end of the Cusco Valley, stop into Ombuco and take a look at the little town that now sits 
right where a 500 foot tall hill used to be. It's not far from Rumikoika. And go to Rumikoika too. Look at the valley from there. You will see where the Great Lost Lake used to be. And you'll see why they left. So yes, it makes sense to me that there was a long lake that went in the Cusco Valley all the way from San Geronimo clear on down to Lucre. Once you've been there and you've taken a look at Rumicolca, the what is known to be an aqueduct for the Inca, and looked at its megalithic core, you realize that it was modified to support an aqueduct. You look at where you from where you're standing, you can see there's a, an area that looks like it might have been a lake right there in Lucre. Ambutio is around the corner. And you just kind of get this feeling, this is a spillway. But how could it be a spillway? It's all dirt. The stones have been taken away, just like all floors that are very useful elsewhere. And then they used the actual supports for the aqueducts. And that's all still there today. Undeniably, it was an ink aqueduct. But the original architects had it as a different purpose. And I think it was a spillway. People are going to ask me questions, for example, that in this video, it's an aqueduct. No, it could have been a spillway. The stones are gone. People are going to say things like, well, Tapan is at an altitude of 11,200 feet. That's 700 feet above what you're saying was the edge of the lake on the north side. Well, yeah, the growing area where the water comes down, the agricultural area is at 11,700 feet. I'm sorry, 11,200 feet. But the harbor that is on the midway point of the, of the, the long lake, that harbor, that safe haven is at 10,500 feet. So water's coming down, a safe harbor, plenty of ways to grow things. It is a perfect spot for a village and access into the middle of the lake. People will say that the Cori Concha is also at 11,200 or 11,300 feet. That's 700 or 800 feet above the valley. The very valley where the airport is, is at 10,700, you know, just a little bit above Lake Edge. And it's really down by San Geronimo that that's where the lake comes in at past that thin spot. So yeah, maybe you're four miles away from the edge of the lake, but you still have all the farmland spread out in front of you. You have all three rivers that come down and merge right there, less than a thousand feet from the Cori Concha. And you have water all the time, fields and sun all the time, and a lake for everything else. And so this, it makes sense. Maybe 700 feet, that's a nice view, but you're going to park some nice buildings there. Another question is going to be, well, if the dam broke then and let the, the lake out, then why would the Rumikolka be there still? Well, that's because the Rumikolka was just a spillway designed in for this lake. And there was, it's down by Humbukyo that the earth eventually became so saturated at one time, the water was up to a level and then it just let go. It, it, it was an earthen mountain. It wasn't solid granite. Who knew? And it let go and spilled everything into the next valley, which in that valley includes Oyante Tambo. It includes Urubamba. It includes Pizac, or the village of Pizac, but of course the fortress of Pizac is. So everything downstream from there, right on down to Machu Picchu. If in fact, maybe the ancient architects had a village at the base of Machu Picchu, somewhere close to Aguas Caliente, for all we know. It was destroyed. So, yes, R Rumicoco would still be there. Tapan would still be there a little bit above. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of interesting questions to this theory. I know I'm not the first person to think of this theory. The cab driver that we had on that day kept saying Laguna Grande, and he was trying to describe that this was a bigger lake at one time or another. And I was kind of like, it wasn't until much later that I really started putting things together and thinking about things. And we had driven down into that area near Hambuco before we came back and then fall. But so my, my mind frame wasn't to that point then, but it sure started to look like it then. And then when I started putting the numbers together, so 
that is why I put this video together. It's a great perspective on why the valley is so fertile. It was a kettle pond, a kettle lake, for a very long time before an earthquake really shook everything up and an earthen dam let loose. That just destroys everything. And hence the original ancient architects of who knows way back when <laughs> decided to move on. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to your comments. And remember, please always keep an open mind.